Hi, it's Richard here from OneSite Solutions. Welcome to this module on BACnet. So BACnet is a, a huge subject, um, so we won't be going through everything that's BACnet. We'll just be looking at the very basics, really, to set up a BACnet uh, on your station. So to do that, we need to go to Drivers. So I'm on my remote host now. And then select New at the bottom. And change look so we want the BACnet. So okay. Uh, no need to change the, the name, you can only add one BACnet network. So uh when I double click on it, you'll see at the bottom there's a few buttons and most of them are grayed out. Um and the one we want to use, the discover is grayed out. So there's three things we need to take care of now before we can uh that discover button is available. The first thing, if you unfold BACnet network in your sidebar you'll see a local device. If you double click on that, um, the third line down is object ID. So this is where we put in the device instance for our device. So a good convention to follow here is to use the last three digits of your IP address of your remote host. So mine's 6205, so I'll put that in there. This is just to avoid any kind of clashes or any duplicates. Save that. So that's the first thing taken care of. Uh, the next two things are underneath uh, network, which is underneath BACnet.com. So buried quite deep down uh, is our IP port. So if I double click on that, this is where I now have to select which of the two uh, adapters I have on my JACE I'm going to be using. So uh, I'm going to be using adapt um, port 1, which is uh, DM0. Uh, port 2 is DM1. So it's DM0 I'm going to be using. Save that. So that's two things taken care of now. The last thing is just to enable that port. So to do that, a bit further down the list there, you've got um, enabled. Save that to true. Uh, and now I should be able to go back to my BACnet network and my discover button should be available. And it is. Uh, so now I can hit that. So this is uh, my search um, when I'm searching for devices. So um, if you could clamp this down if you're on a, a big network and there's lots of devices to save a bit of time. Um, I know um, I've only got one BACnet device in my network, so I can just uh, leave the search fields the same. And uh, it doesn't take very long in my instance. Okay, so there's my device. So I can now just drag that down and add it to my database. Okay, so now I'm at a, I'm now in my device manager. So I can now, um, if I double click my point shield, I'll be in my point manager. And I've already, I've done a discover a second ago, so it's kind of cached that, but now you'd hit discover and find all your um, objects. So a good idea here is to organize them uh, by object type by clicking on this box here. And then you can bring all the, the, um, the types in together. So if I select all my analog inputs, I can add all those together. And there shouldn't be anything I need to change on a, on a it's a read only point. Um, so it's a numeric point it's going to be using uh, and it's enabled. If you wanted to, if you added another policy, which I'll show in a second, you might you might want to uh, change the policy as you bring the points in, but you can change that afterwards. So if you look down on, on my database, everything's used to the default policy at the moment. So you can uh, change that or you can add your own policies. So um, if you look further down in your BACnet network, there's a tuning policy in your sidebar. If you unfold that, the default policy, if we have a look, that's how it's set up by default. So you can change that or you can just create your own policies. So uh, just duplicate it, give it a new name. Okay, so I can double click on that and edit that now. So change this to fast. Save that. Add another one. Just duplicate it again. Call this one slow. Edit that one. 
And also a good idea is to have a, a COV, change of value. So if I duplicate it again, if I can edit that one now. What I can do now is change where it says use COV. I can change that to true. Once you've selected that, um, it will just ignore the, the pole frequency and just uh, just see a change of value. And you've also got use confirm COV. Um, you don't need to use that if you don't if you can get away without using that then I would suggest you don't use that because it just uses a bit more a bit more comms uh so now I've got my I've got you know three different um policies there now so I could now go back to uh, my points So I could just go and uh, change these now, double click on them and change the policy here to whatever I feel necessary. It's a good idea not to put them all on fast. Uh, you know, just be realistic about this. If it's a space temperature, it's not going to change very often. So, um, you know, maybe put that on a slow policy. Return temperatures. Again, they're going to be very slow to react. So you can put them. Um, oh, sorry, that's a speed. Oh, I put exactly what you shouldn't do there put it on a slow so you can just go and uh, you know change all these policies afterwards or you can uh, you can um, select them so here's my um, set points here my heat and my cool set point if I had these two at the same time just by dragging them down again I can use this multi select wizard uh, to change you know both of them at the same time so I can put this on a, a cov every time it changes value um, and make sure also that they're writable these points and then once you've made something writable um, it goes back to enabled false so we have to take take care of that as well so uh, what you need to make sure of is all your points in your database are all healthy you don't want to see any points which are disabled or which would be gray so if I now bring in my analog outputs, drag them down. So you can see they're they're disabled. So if I just if I bring bring them all in uh, disabled, you can see I'd get a grey line. So if you get that, um, you can then just uh, highlight them all again. Uh, click on edit at the bottom and then you're presented with this wizard again and you can just go on and click on true and they're all healthy so you carry on just adding all your points in the same fashion um, just making sure they're all healthy once you get them into there and make sure that they're writable if they're meant to be writable again you can uh, enable this um, this column and you'll be able to see in your table so uh, last thing I was going to quickly show you was uh, how to expose points on your device so uh, if you unfold local device in your uh, tree here in your sub network it's sorry in your nav sidebar and then click on export table um, so now I've got a discover at the bottom again but this time when it, when it does the discover it's actually going to uh, come up with my BQL query builder and I'm going to be discovering points on my on my JSE. So I can now say I want to find uh, I don't know if I've got I've got a couple of mod bus points here. I've got these two mod bus points. So if I discover uh, if I if I try to do a discover inside my pump one, it will be looking inside pump one. So um, you have to discover on the folder above it. So okay, and there we are. There's my two points. So if I add those two points now to my export list. They will now be discoverable and people will be able to discover those points now because I've put them on my export list. Okay, so one more final thing just to show you quickly. Um, it's actually a, a question that comes up a lot in tech support. Is uh, how do I add um, a 485 network, a BATnet network? So you don't um, do what you might think and add another BATnet network. You actually go into the BATnet network you've created already. Um, which defaults to IP. That's why when when I set this IP one up, I already had 
already had an IP port on there. So if I then go back to my um, area um, where I saw my when I set my IP port up, which is underneath my network in underneath Batnet.com, you can see here I've got an IP port already set up there, which I just already uh, set up. So to set up a 485, I just add another network. So um, if I open up my palette for my Batnet. Down here we've got network ports. Um, so you've got three different types you can add there. You can only have one IP port, um, but I can add MST ports to this. And to do it, you just drag it on your um, nav sidebar, release it on top of network, and then you can just go ahead then and uh, configure your um, MSTP settings. So you'd have to go and um, select your COM port that, that you're using your board rate, etc., to set that up. So that's where you go to add your MSTP ports. Okay, so that's it on BACnet. Um, thanks a lot for watching. I hope you're enjoying watching these videos. If you are, please uh, look at the bottom, uh, click on the thumb uh, to like it, and also subscribe, and I'll see you next time.